please be seated. Beautiful, beautiful winter Sunday day that we can all enjoy together as we worship the Lord. And you may remain seated as we have our gathering chorus, Majesty. <coughs>
bow our heads together and have our prayer of confession. Let us pray. Merciful God, as we bow our heads for this prayer, we confess that it's much easier to see and name the sins and mistakes and faults of others than it is to name our own. And although we try to avoid or hide from the truth, deep down we know that you know, Lord. You know the truth. And we give thanks, Lord God, that you don't ask us to be perfect, but you do ask us to be honest. And so we pray that you will help us to be honest, Lord, honest with ourselves, with others, and with you. And so we pray and ask you to show us the things that we've done that are wrong, help us to recognize the ways we need to change, and give us the courage to confess our sins and give us determination to make amends. Where we have hurt others, help us to seek forgiveness. And where others have hurt us, help us to offer forgiveness so that we will know the freedom of forgiving and of being forgiven. And all this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Hear this assurance of forgiveness in Psalm 103. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Amen. Our responsive reading this morning is from Psalm 46. And let's stand for this. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth should change. Though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in uproar. The kingdoms totter. The others is voice. The earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. See what desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. And as you remain standing, let's sing together thy word. so generous to us in so many ways. 
And so we dedicate our offering to you this day as a way of saying thank you. Thank you for all you have given to us. And may what we give to you be used to accomplish your work in this world. Loving God, as we prepare to hear your word, we ask you to help us to understand what you say to us today through our Bible reading and through what you have inspired Tom to prepare. As we listen, may we come to better understand your will for us and seek to live it out each and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture lesson today is taken from the book of Psalms, reading Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills, from where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. Amen. It was a beautiful summer Sunday afternoon, and Paula's grandparents decided to take a drive. Little did they realize that their lives would be forever changed when they returned home. During their drive, a fire started in a building on their farm, and with the high winds that day, the fire spread rapidly. When they returned, they had lost everything, all their possessions, all their treasures, all their clothes. Paula's grandmother had gone into the car with only her slippers on, and when she returned, those slippers were the only footwear she had left. As they stood before the charred remains that hours before had been their home and had been the family home for a long time, they felt shock and wondered who would help them. If you went for a drive, and you returned home to discover that all of your earthly possessions had gone up in smoke, literally, where would you turn for help? Every day, people are seeking help to their problems or their pain. When it comes to sickness or pain, we seek help from doctors. When we feel alone, we go to our friends. When we need to be loved, we turn to our families and loved ones. In our problems and pain, we usually seek help that is beyond ourselves. And that's what it was like 3,000 years ago when the psalmist penned the familiar words of Psalm 121. 3,000 years ago, if you had a problem and you needed help, you looked beyond yourself. And in the case of Psalm 121, many people looked up. The heathen culture that infiltrated Israel had established pagan temples. And where do you think these temples were built? They were built on the highest points of land, on top of hills and mountains. This is why the opening verse of Psalm 121 is actually a rhetorical question the people knew the answer. When the psalmist asked, I lift up mine eyes to the hills, from where will my help come? Asking, do I lift up my eyes to the pagan temples on the hilltops because that's where I will be helped? The psalmist emphatically provides the answer as he declares, no, my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Has anything changed in 3,000 years? People may not be running to false gods on hilltops, but they are still pursuing the wrong things that cannot help them. <clears throat> People are running after money, thinking that the more they have, the happier they will be. People pursue the rich and famous, 
foolishly thinking that shallow relationships will somehow make them feel more important. People waste their savings gambling, foolishly thinking that their problems will be solved if they only can win the lottery. Others are looking for answers in alcohol or in one more indulgence of cannabis. Still others pursue buying things, believing the more they have, the more they will be happy. And in all of these examples, people are looking for help beyond themselves. But God has a better solution. As the psalmist declares, my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And notice the examples that are given in this song that reveal the ways in which God wants to help us. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. The Lord is the shade on your right hand. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord will keep your life. According to the psalmist, how do we experience all of these ways that God wants to help us? Do we travel on a religious pilgrimage to a mountaintop temple? Do we have to pursue God in order to find Him somewhere out there and receive His help? Do we have to look for God beyond ourselves? No! In giving all of these examples, the psalmist is trying to tell us that the Lord is here with you, right here, right now. You don't have to seek for God somewhere beyond yourself. God is much closer. God is within you because of your faith in Jesus Christ. God goes with you and he is no further than a prayer away. Wherever you find yourself, God is with you. In each and every moment of every day, God is with you. You don't have to search for God to find Him because God is with you. And He's arranging timings. He's working things out. He's already got the plan in place to provide the solutions that you need. You don't have to go searching out God. Instead, you can confidently, confidently declare, My help comes from the Lord. But we all know that suddenly, unexpectedly, life can deal some pretty awful blows. Blows that leave us shock, hurt, and confused. And what do we do in those moments when, like Paula's grandparents experienced, we are reeling and we don't know what to do next? Those awful moments when you find yourself broadsided in life, I urge you to please remember the church family at Pelican Point Church in East Grand Bahamas. Have you heard of something called Hurricane Dorian? Yes, the same Hurricane Dorian that hit Prince Edward Island in early September of 2019. And while Dorian was a powerful storm for us, it was a devastating hurricane for the people of the Bahamas. And on September 2nd, 2019, they experienced the full force of the hurricane. A day later, this is what Pelican Point Church looked like. Imagine. Imagine in standing in the ruins of your home or your church, and there's no food, there's no shelter, there's no electricity. How would you feel? Angry? Numb? Alone? Afraid? Bitter? Tens of thousands of people in the Bahamas certainly felt those emotions, but they also did something else. They stood helpless in the wreckage and the devastation and they prayed, Lord, I trust in you. Some even said, my help comes from the Lord. 
and God answered their prayers by sending emergency relief from nations, including Canada. And one of the most important aspects of relief came not from a government agency or the United Nations, it came from a Christian organization called Samaritan's Purse, founded by Billy Graham's son, Franklin. In the aftermath of Dorian, with the country's infrastructure wiped out, there were no hospitals. Within 48 hours, Samaritan's Purse had arrived and set up an entire hospital in the Bahamas, complete with nurses and doctors who provided medical care to hundreds of people each day, including surgeries. And this is a picture of that hospital. An entire hospital with wards, supplies, uh, generators, everything they needed to provide medical care for hundreds of people each day. Back in Abaco, where Pelican Point Church is located, the community required a massive cleanup before anything could be rebuilt. And this is a picture of what it looked like when, when it started. That's where their rebuild began, with complete devastation. And for Pastor Freddie Lane and his congregation, the rebuilding process was inseparably connected with their unshakable belief that God was with them and would help them. And this is where they are now. Lisa, if you will put on the short video, that would be great. To God be all the glory. The great things he has done. September 2nd, 2019, Hurricane Dorian moved at a snail's pace over Grand Bahama, unleashing Category 5 winds, deadly storm surge, and flooding that claimed the lives of many residing on the island's eastern end. Driving through the area today is a stark reminder of the catastrophic impact of Hurricane Dorian. Residents of Pelican Point are still recovering. Some homes have been rebuilt, and others are still being repaired. But EastEnders are not without hope. You may recall that St. Matthew Baptist Church was completely destroyed by Hurricane Dorian, but today the structure has been restored. Pastor Freddie Lang says it has been an emotional journey thus far. I must give thanks firstly to God and, and also we've had um, Southern Baptists of the United States, uh, Louisiana and Mississippi district in particular have really been instru instru instrumental in our help thus far. So by all means, we are getting there. We're making strides. It should be really nice. Oh, I promise you, it should be really nice. And then of course- The church is the only house of faith in Pelican Point, and Pastor Lang notes that it is the community's lighthouse. Witnessing the destruction in the wake of the storm, he stood in faith, believing that it would all work out for the greater good in the end. Even though the devastation was rough and tough, my faith was very strong. I never really looked too much at what it was, but rather what it will become. And so my words of encouragement to others who, who, who are still going, going through, because many others, hundreds of, of people right in East Grand Bahama still have a long way to go. And my my encouragement to them is to apply your faith with works. Pastor Lane said, even though the devastation was rough and tough, my faith was very strong. I never really looked too much at what it was, but rather what it will become. Pastor Lane's words are another way of saying, my help comes from the Lord. You know, would we have that same kind of faith if our home was suddenly wiped out? If our church was suddenly wiped out in a matter of a day, would we have that kind of faith? And I have to tell you, in researching for this message, 
I went on a number of, of church websites in the Bahamas. <laughs> and the message was incredibly consistent. In the midst of the devastation, in the midst of the loss, in the midst of the shock that they felt, they resolved to keep trusting in God. You would think that losing so much, people would give up their faith. Actually, their churches grew as people reached out believing that God would see them through. Phenomenal faith. And Pastor Lane and his church, just one example of countless others who saw the devastation around them in the midst of their own shock and grief as an opportunity to trust and deepen their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I think one of the reasons why they were able to do that is at the very heart of what Psalm 121 is trying to get us to learn. God isn't out there somewhere. God is in here through the power and presence of the Holy Spirit in your life because of your faith. The same faith that we share with our sisters and brothers in the Bahamas. Where do we go from here? 2021 is not going to be a year in which all of our problems go away and life returns completely to normal as much as we wish it would. We'll still have personal challenges. We still have an ongoing pandemic to deal with. But the people of the Bahamas serve as an example to us of how we should think and act and believe in the midst of our storms. In the midst of their devastation, as they prayed, they stood firm in their faith, and God brought them the help that they needed through the strength of their own faith and their determination to overcome their problems with God's help. And through other Christians like Samaritan's Purse, they have begun to rebuild. Paula and I believe that God wants each one of you to have this same resolute faith in 2021. As the people of the Bahamas who had lost everything knew that God was close to them and so could trust in God to help them, we hope that this is what happens to us in 2021. Not that we have devastation, but that we know the same faith that they have, that the Holy Spirit within us will be the one that we go to first when we need help. And this is why Paul and I would like to suggest that we adopt Psalm 121 verse 2 as our three theme scripture for 2021, so that when we face difficulties or problems, or we're worried or afraid or feeling overwhelmed or struggling to just get through another day in the midst of COVID fatigue, we will draw strength and encouragement as we are reminded as of the truth of this verse which proclaims, My help comes from the Lord. Throughout 2021, as individuals and as a church family, let's turn to God for help. Let's trust Him for the comfort, strength, hope, and answers that we need. And in the months ahead, may our faith deepen and grow as we trust in Him and proclaim with our thoughts, our words, and our actions, My help comes from the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Great message and a great story. <clears throat> about the church. Just a reminder that uh, tomorrow evening at 6.30 is the Presbytery Visitation, and four members of the Presbytery are coming to check in with the congregation and ask um, what you think is going well in the congregation, what our challenges, our opportunities are, and then if you have any questions for them. So it's 6.30. Susie has set up a, a sign-up online for tomorrow evening, so if you're able to come, please sign up. We have to do that for the contact tracing. And again, tomorrow at 6.30, it should only be about half an hour for the congregational portion. In your pews this morning, you should have found a blue form, and we're in the process of looking for nominations for candidates to serve as elders. 
and the, um, the everything is outlined there. And also, you are asked, please ask the person first before you nominate them, and and make sure you ask them, are you willing to serve as an elder? Because it will save a lot of time and process if we have nominations of people who are actually willing to serve. Surprise, so, surprise. Yeah. So please ask the person. Don't nominate someone without asking them and asking them the question, are you willing to serve? And if they are, then by all means. And you can nominate more than one person. You just need a form for each person. Uh, reports are due for the annual report. So if you haven't um, submitted yours yet, if you could this week, that would be much appreciated. So we can start printing and putting the booklets together. And the fund script order is going in today, so if you have orders, you can place them on the offering plates in the foyer, and the next order will go in on February the 7th. And as we prepare for prayer, Evelyn is going to sing Blessed Assurance.
and we flounder and despair needlessly. And so we pray you will remind us that just as our call to worship proclaimed, you are our refuge and strength, our ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, because you, Lord Almighty, are with us, and you are our fortress. Help us remember this truth, Lord God, so that we will proclaim the words of Psalm 121 with confidence. My help comes from the Lord. My help comes from God. Because we trust in you, Lord, we believe that you always hear and answer our prayers. And so we pray now for the needs of our church family and the extended families of each one. We continue to pray for Doug McEachern as he's in hospital, that your healing hand will be upon him. And please bless and strengthen Valerie and all the family. Loving God, we pray for those who have suffered the loss of loved ones. We pray especially today for Carol Green, and for Bill and Linda Stavert, and all the family as they mourn the passing of Carol's daughter, Carol Lee McGinnis, this past week. Please comfort and strengthen them and Carol Lee's husband, Ron, and her daughter, Lindsay. We pray also for Rebecca Duran and her family as they grieve Ernie's passing this past week, and ask that you please give them comfort and strength. As people continue to receive the vaccine, we pray that it will be effective and that the tide will soon turn in our battle against this pandemic. Lord God, this world is a fearsome place and it's easy for us to be filled with fear and worry and dread. But you have promised that you watch over us and that you are always with us, that you never slumber or sleep. And so we know that our help and our hope is in you. Help us to trust in you more. And all these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And our closing praise this morning is, I to the hills will lift my eyes.